Hey there, Maple Avenue. It's Mr. Martino here. This week, what we're going to be doing is looking at the Crusades. Now, with the Crusades, we are actually going to be finding out the bigger impact that they had on human society. Because without the Crusades, many people could say that the Americas would have not been discovered or would have been discovered later. The Crusades are going to set that up. So within this unit, you should be able to explain what the effects of the Crusades had on human society. And to get there, you should be able to list the main points of the Crusades and also be able to analyze and judge which of the effects of the Crusades was most influential. Now, why do we have the Crusades? Well, as we could see here, the Holy Land, which is present-day Israel, is actually going to be overtaken or taken by um, Muslims or Muslim uh, rulers. And not only that, but they're actually going to be attacking the Byzantine Empire, which we last kind of talked about with being the Eastern Roman Empire. Um, they changed their name to the Byzantine Empire. And they're going to be attacking uh, the Byzantine Emperor or Empire. Now, Jerusalem is going to be a very contested city. Why? Because it has religious significance to all three major monotheistic religions, including which are, which are Christianity, Judaism, and uh, Muslim faiths. Now, here, who fights in the Crusades? Really, a lot of people within Europe, of uh, the Western Europe, is going to be fighting within the Crusades. A lot of Muslim empires as well. Uh, there's a little bit of a tidbit. A lot of people don't quite know that there's going to be Crusades called uh, even later than what some would list here. Uh, there's even some sort of crusade, you could say, that the Pope declared that happened in Spain. But for our case and purposes, we're going to be looking at the crusades that look that tried to regain the Holy Land, uh, which is more within present-day Israel, parts of Turkey, and Syria, a present-day, present-day world. So here this slide just talks about what the Crusades were. The Christians, why were Christians joining this? Well, it really was because the Pope said, hey, if you go and retake the Holy Land, I'm going to give you a grant, or God is going to give you a grant to heaven, or to sort of an, an indulgence. We're going to be looking more of that when we get to Martin Luther down the road, but an indulgence is, if you do this task or if you pay this now, you have a kind of like a, a card to heaven or a card to a holy or a great place in the afterworld when you're, once you're dead. And to a lot of people in the Middle Ages, life stunk. So that deal of being guaranteed to go to a great place um, after they were dead sounded great. They were going to be in uh, their God's favor. So that's why a lot of people are going to be joining into these crusades, specifically the First Crusade. So this is the big part of the unit I wanted to get at, is what are the effects? The crusades are naturally not going to be very successful. Uh, really, the only one that was successful is the First Crusade. The other ones are going to be plagued by people who are going to become bankrupt by going through the Crusades. A lot of kingdoms, a lot of empires will. Uh, there's actually even going to be a children's crusade that fails miserably. Most of the children that are going to be sent to the crusade uh, are going to be enslaved themselves by uh, actually most of the other Christians. So the Crusades were a failure in regaining the Holy Land. There were some minor accomplishments here and there. But ultimately, we could say that they failed. Now, what is the effects of the Crusades? It's going to bring, as we can see here, 
changes in Western European life. And it really is going to help bring to an end the Middle Ages as we know it. So the first one, it's going to broaden people's outlook on the world. When people found out there was a world outside of Europe, there were um, other societies, people who were more advanced than they were in Europe, it made them realize, wait a second, maybe what we're doing here in Europe itself isn't the right thing to do. Um, here, they, um, people from France and England and parts of present-day Germany, which was the Holy, Rom um, Holy Roman Empire back then, are going to be seeing these flourishing trade empires, prosperous injury, industries. And they're going to be seeing arts and sciences that were at one time lost. Uh, a lot of these arts and sciences are going to be, some of them are from uh, the ancient Roman and ancient Greek days. So this broadening people's outlook on the world is going to be really important. You can almost say that this idea is similar to having a, what we call today, a global perspective. Um, global perspective is when you are aware of the world around you. Um, you understand others' cultures. So having that global perspective is similar to this broadening people's outlook. Another big thing that comes from the effects of Crusades is it stimulates trade and town growth. Uh, this is going to be because a lot of the people who go to Israel, or what we know as the, whole, the Holy Land or Israel today, they're going to be getting these products that weren't available in, in Europe at the time. Spices, silks, rugs, papers. And they're actually going to be coming in on something called the Silk Road. We looked a little bit about with ancient China before with the Silk Road. And this says, wait a second, this stuff that they have, it's really cool. We want it. And because there's a demand for these products, Europeans are going to set up new trade routes once again. And these trade routes are going to stimulate or increase the economies of Europe. But specifically here in Italy, and Italy's going to get stinking rich off of the Crusades because, well, for, part of it's because of their location. All the Crusades essentially go through um, Italy as they're organizing to get to the Holy Land. And everything that's coming out of um, the Holy Land generally has to go through Italy to get to the rest of Europe. So Italy is going to become rich. And wait a second. One of the things that happens because of this is we need a better system. We're going to be, need actual money. We can't barter for things as much anymore. I can't go to the store and say, hey, I got three chickens. Can I get a, um, a goat for that? Not going to happen. Instead, we're going to naturally need payment of gold and silver coins. Um, towns are going to be growing in numbers as well during this time. And the bourgeois, or this middle class, is going to acquire more wealth. Um, and these Italian cities grow richer because of this. So there's going to be a growing middle class that comes out of this trade from the Crusades which really weakens the nobles that we looked at in feudalism and also the, um, the knights and things of that sort at landowning capability. Another thing that this will do is actually strengthen the king's power in Europe as well. So it weakens the nobility because the nobles will sell their lands to raise money for the Crusades. This was the, basically the backbone of feudalism. It was land-based. The more land you had, the more power you had. So if you're selling off your land, nobles are no longer going to have that power. And it's going to be stimulating trade. 
And since trade will require some sort of central authority, the king is going to be providing those things. They're going to be providing laws and orders to help regulate um, trade, or at least they're not just uh, regulation, but to protect trade and trading routes. People are going to have to have militaries to watch the road to make sure that there's no, well, on the seas, pirates or on the land, thieves taking things. And we talked about that growing middle class, that merchant class in the last slide. They oppose this, the feudal lords uh, because the middle class doesn't have land here. Their power, if you will, comes through wealth of money, not through land. So we're going to have these two systems come up of is it power through land or power, which is the feudal system, or power through money, which down the road gets us through with mercantilism. When we look at that with the Renaissance, and you can even argue with today, it sets up capitalism. In the last one here, or excuse me, not the last one, this is the second to last one, we have this idea of serfdom. So serfdom is when you're bound to the land. It's almost like a slavery, if you will, but you're instead of being bound to a person, you're bound to the land and you can't move off of that land. No person owns you. It's almost the land owns you, if you will. And this is going to weaken, the uh, Crusades weaken serfdom and feudalism because of that so you can gain sort of a freedom of through the crusades if you joined them a lot of nobles were um kind of revoking what the or they were saying that oh if the nobles were saying oh if you join the crusade here you are no longer bound to this land um here we see some other things. One of the big things is the serfs are going to be fleeting or they fled to the towns. So the towns, there are no nobles that can really rule you. Um, and because of this, they're actually going to become, gain their sort of their freedom, if you will, and move into these more middle class positions. So the Weakening you know, the serfdom is going to be the fourth result of the Crusades. And the last one here is going to be encouraging learning. I mentioned in the first point a little bit about how the Crusades are going to be bringing back those Roman and Greek ideas. Well, they preserved it here. Um, and because of this, we're going to get a revival of these Greco-Roman ideas or this knowledge. And this is going to set up a period of time called the Renaissance, which Renaissance is a rebirth, if you will, rebirth of knowledge. And we start to see education grow again um, without these Renaissance ideas and without this knowledge. A lot of great leaders were going to be looking down the road at something called Machiavelli and how Machiavelli influences our leaders of today or looking at artwork, Michelangelo, um, looking at the Ninja Turtles. No, just joking. Ha ha ha. Um, but looking at Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci, um, people of that sort who are going to bring back these arts and literature, sciences and that. So the Crusades helped us see once again the things that mankind, humankind have done in the past and brought it back. And now we can add to it. So really, these are the five effects of the Crusades. The first one, we brought it in people's outlook on uh, the world. We're stimulating trade and tr trade in towns. We're strengthening the king and central governments. They weakened serfdom and it encouraged learning.